A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is your one-stop shop to building a beautiful online presence. Hello everyone, good morning and welcome back to the channel and welcome for the first time if you're new. And if you are new or you're one of my 75% of viewers that are not subscribed to the channel, please do go ahead and hit that big red button now and subscribe because there's lots of exciting content that I do not want you to miss out on. And today we have another exciting video because it is time to get my Porsche its needed suspension refresh. Now let's hark back about three months. I took my Porsche Boxster S, which I'm driving now, to ePorsche over in Bisley for its first sort of inspection and service. And to my delight, we did that and found that this is actually a really, really good example. Everything was more or less in order. Lots of unexpected things like the brakes and some of the radiators had all been replaced recently, presumably at quite great expense. And I only paid £3,800 for this car, which just makes it all the more sweet. Now, one thing that Chris, the mechanic who you all came to know and love from that video said, is that this car would benefit from a suspension refresh at some point. Now, the suspension is something I would never really consider doing, but with a car like this Boxster S, the way it's set up and the fact it's mid-engine and it's very, very dependent on the suspension in terms of how it drives, I did put some thought into this and think that it would be a good move. And so, speaking with the guys at ePorsche, as Roly mentioned at the start of that video, he did recently buy another business called La Rose Porsche, which is in Seven Oaks, which is where I'm heading this morning as they've invited me to come and have the suspension refresh done there at La Rose Porsche. So, I'm just driving, hang on, there's a little tunnel here. Never ever heard this in a tunnel. Such a distinct flat six sound this car makes, I love it. Anyway, they suggested I bring the car to the Rose Porsche to have the work done, which is exactly what I'm gonna be doing. So it is a full suspension refresh, I believe, to the value of around 3,000 pounds, which very kindly, the Rose Porsche are helping me out with considerably. So, we're gonna go there now. We're gonna meet Dean, who runs the Rose. He's hopefully gonna talk us through exactly what the work's entailing, what parts are gonna be fitted. This is gonna be quite a tall order to get it all done in a day because I think they're gonna have two people basically working on it the entire time to get it all done. Now there is one other issue that I've encountered with the car over the past few weeks, which is I've got this weird crunchy clutch pedal. Now, it only does it maybe one every 20 times that I've depressed the clutch and it's not replicating it for me now, so I can't really demonstrate, but it literally is a crunchy clutch. You press the pedal and it just makes it crunchy and it feels crunchy. And I believe this is the clutch power spring, which is actually something under here that can be greased or replaced. So hopefully they'll be able to have a look at that for me today as well. So a few minutes to go now down to Seven Oaks to La Rose Porsche. We'll get the guys there on camera and work out exactly what we're going to be doing today. And then I'm gonna be very, very excited to, to see, really, there's the crunchy clutch, did you hear that? Such a horrible sensation when that happens. But I will be excited to see what difference it makes to how the car feels once this suspension is done. So then big thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. As you can imagine, these types of videos in particular are very expensive to make. And so it is with great thanks to Squarespace for making this video possible. Now at this YouTube channel, you may well have noticed that there is no current website. And that is something that we've been looking to change. And over the past few months, we've been using Squarespace to design 
our very own website. Now Squarespace is great because it is a very intuitive website to use even for beginners that have no experience in building and designing websites. Now as well as there's tons of templates that you can choose from, you are able to tailor your website to be completely bespoke and how you like. Later down the line when the website is mostly built, we'll be able to use Squarespace to optimize it for mobile devices too, which is gonna be super, super helpful when you find out what we're doing with the website. Another added benefit of when the website is done is that we'll be able to track analytics of the website and of our members and the audiences using Squarespace itself. It is all very much integrated and as I said at the start of the video, a one-stop shop for all things websites. So then head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And once you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash it's Joel for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. Right, everyone. So please welcome Dean to the channel. Dean is the sort of Roly of LaRose Porsche. Is that fair to say? Yes. Yeah. So Roly is my business partner for LaRose. I'm uh, one of the other owners. Uh, Roly runs well, e-Porsche, and um, I run La Rose. So yes, Rayleigh and I took over La Rose in April last year, 21, and um, it's been great since, and yeah, welcome to our workshop. Thank you so much, let's have a look around. <laughs> yeah, so this is our engine rebuild bay. It's um, looking a bit messy and congested at the moment, um, but right now we're busy doing a Boxster engine over there, which is the same as your car, 3.2. Got two technicians over there pretending to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we've got a nice setup here. We've got quite a lot of space. We've got four ramps, and then a the fifth ramp is a uh, four poster, which is dedicated to four wheel alignments. And then when we, uh, during break times, I think it's just break times, we've got this facility over here for, for staff, and, um, and that's for them to have a bit of fun. So, Going to take you over to the ramp where we're going to be doing the work on your car. Yes. We've already laid out the parts we're going to fit on your car. This is what we call the Spider Performance uh, Experience because we're going to be using all of Spider Performance parts. They direct replacements for all the Porsche parts, just all the suspension arms, tuning forks, coffin arms, track arms, etc. And um, this is what we're going to be fitting on your car today. So to start off, the very famous Coffin arms, also known as lower control arms. So presumably, how many of these are there? Because there's yeah, four of them. Four of these, so one for each corner. And with this whole suspension refresh, yes, will it make a noticeable difference to how the car drives? Absolutely. Yeah. If you think the suspension components are now, look, we haven't looked under your car just yet, but we're going to assume, like most of them, that haven't had these sorts of arms replaced. It's probably going to be all the original equipment from factory. If you think how many years old, you know, what year is your car? Uh, 2003. 2003, so we're we looking at sort of... Uh, almost nice, almost no, 20 years almost old Almost 20 now. years. So um, it's going to be all the original from, from 20 years ago. So certainly, by the time we replace all these components, do a four-wheel alignment, we can figure out what sort of setup you want, if you want just a standard setup or whether you want a fast road setup. The stand-up setup will give you the best wear on your tyres. Fast road will be in spec, but a little bit more camber. And um, just depends if you're planning on doing any track days in the vehicle. Yeah, so what um, we've decided to do is we've turned a uh, 986 Boxster um, into a track, uh, track car. So just for the guys, what we're going to do is start doing some track evenings. So we've got brands hatch mm. off the road. Yes, yeah. So that will be very convenient. Just finish a little bit earlier than normal. Head over with, with the team. Um, the guys at ePorsche are coming down, but there's nine of them, so they're going to be taking two cars. Nice. And um, yeah, so try to do, maybe try and make it a regular thing, and then just good for morale, really. What a place to work. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm opening up here the two wheel drive top mounts. Okay. Which are relevant to your vehicle. We also do the forward wheel drive, but there's obviously a two wheel drive. Yeah. These come with the bearing. Also, part of doing the um, front shock absorber top mounts, what you do is the bump stops. They, yep. um, they tend to break up over time. Sort of thing that most customers see on their reports. I think Chris pointed out in the last video as well that there was some moisture building up around those. Yeah. So, And then at the top of the shock absorber, you've got conical washers and they, they corrode. So what we'll do is replace them at the same time. It's quite surprising actually to see the amount of components that are going to be going on the car. And it's very satisfying actually just how brand new and clean they all are. 
it's they don't really stay nice clean feeling, for very actually. long, not with our British roads no, this well, time of year. Especially, so. yeah, all the salt mm. and everything. This car is absolutely filthy, actually, and needs a good old clean. It's but I want to get it mechanically good, yeah. and then we can focus on cleaning it, I think. Right, so next, what we've got is steering track arms. You've got what we call the inner joint over there. It's obviously one for each side. And then we've got the outer joint. Okay. And that connects the hub side. Okay, so that's the front end for you. Um, let's move on to the rear end. So what we've got is rear track arms. And another one. You, you could you could start a career as a one of those unboxing YouTubers. <laughs> you just sit at what, home. What's the pay grade like? Yeah, well, <laughs> terrible if you ask me. But these unboxing children that do it, they, you know, they earn millions. <laughs> You've got the face for it and everything. Right, and now we've got uh, front tuning forks. Nice. It's called a tuning fork because it looks very much like a tuning fork. Also known as a suspension support arm or control arm. So these are the rear tuning forks. And as you can see, these are uh, significantly longer than mm. the front. On the boxers, they have these longer tuning forks. Wow. Whereas on the likes of a 996, they would have um, the same as the front, exactly the same length. So yeah, that's quite a long. And how close to sort of, <coughs> excuse me, how close to sort of OEM specification are this by performance components? So, or um, are they slightly know, improved or lightweight or? They're a direct replacement. Okay. So they'll be the same weight, the same shape. Um, the biggest difference is going to be the cost. You know, for instance, something like this coffin arm, uh, genuine, uh, genuine from the original manufacturer, <laughs> would cost uh, around 280 pounds plus VAT per arm. And I think uh, from Spider Performance, something like 45 quid plus back. Seriously? Or, wow. Yeah. So that's a huge... Yeah. It comes with the same cool. warranty. It comes with a two-year warranty. So, you know, if it was my vehicle, I'd definitely be fitting, certainly, you know, pattern pass because it's not necessary. You can get the same quality yeah. just for a significantly lef less price. So. I guess the main sort of expense that goes into this sort of work is labour because it is quite intensive, isn't it? Yeah. And it's quite complex. Yeah, absolutely. But it keeps us busy. One of our biggest contributions towards our annual turnover is, is suspension work. Okay. And that's why we got the four poster ramp. Yeah. You know, we, we, we're, doing, we're doing alignments every week. Week in, week out, we're doing them. So when we take your steering track arms off, you're going to have the track rod gaiters. We'll have to replace the clips. And then last of all, for the rear coffin arms, you've got the camber adjusters, the eccentric bolts. So we'll be replacing those. Sometimes you don't need to replace them, but in lot, quite often they're corroded. And for a couple of extra uh, quid, you can just Yeah, if we're doing them. all this work, it might as well be done as well. And then the other eccentrics are for the rear track arms. And they, that's what you get the adjustment with. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm intrigued to know how much difference it will make to how the car drives. And yeah. of course, I'll get to drive it home this yeah. afternoon and, yes. and find out. So thank I'm you so much. I'm 100% confident anyway, you're going to. You're gonna you're gonna be texting me later, okay, with a big smile on your face, okay. and then hopefully coming back at some point for some more stuff, which Absolutely. we'll talk about at a future date. But let me just say thank you so much for fitting this all in today for me, and oh, uh, looking forward to seeing the work getting done. Fantastic, fantastic. Let the fun begin. Let the fun begin, indeed. <laughs> By the way, I hope you guys are pleased because in the last video, obviously, I mentioned about should I upgrade or change the exhaust, make it a little bit louder. But all of you guys said, do the suspension refresh first. It's much more important sort of how the car drives than how the car sounds to start with. So yes, that's exactly what we're doing. We are doing the suspension first, as you just heard from Dean. Really exciting because, I don't know, I honestly just think it's not gonna really change the car that much, but everyone has said that it will be night and day. So I'm really excited obviously to get back in it later on and see how it feels. But it's not to say there won't be an exhaust upgrade coming. In fact, I'm pretty sure there will be. It might be a few months because something is being developed specifically for the car, let's just say that much. But yeah, hopefully exhaust will be coming along the way too. And also, can I just point out, there's this beautiful 993 cab sat in the corner here with a two-tone interior. It's got a blue dash and then sort of cream, maybe grayish leather seats. These 993s just get better and better looking as the years go on. Let me know if you agree. 
Oh. Do you feel it then? Yeah, there you go. Oh. No, it's the spring. Ah, the clutch, yeah. I had a look under there myself, but it's so difficult to I see what's going I on. I couldn't in there. get in really. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll just give uh, Porsche a call to see if they've got that on the shelf. Okay. Because then what I can do is just send someone out to go and grab one quickly. Oh, that would be amazing, yeah. Because, um, yeah, you don't want to come all this way. Again. No. <laughs> it's not the spring. end of the world, but I don't, want no. to, I don't want it to break, you know. Yeah. Well, I think it's probably broken already. It's already done. And it can't go anywhere, but um, it just causes a heavy pedal sensation. Yeah. So we're going to start with the rear track arms. <laughs> <laughs> That's normally a, an indication of what might be coming. Yeah. Okay. I get the feel that your rear track arms are going to be, the, the bolts are going to be seized. Okay. And then, um, well, that's when it gets fun, you know, because yeah. then we're going to have to cut them out rather. Okay. And um, quite often you don't have the room to cut anything else. So the rule of thumb is when you're, when you're loosening the nut, if the eccentric then turns on its own, that it's free. If it doesn't spin on its own, then it's probably going to struggle to come out. Okay. So let's see what we got. <laughs> okay. I think that's a no. 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 I think that's also going to be seized. No hammers, they said. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly five minutes in. in. Extreme circumstance. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Right. I've done a rookie mistake here. I've got a ratchet uh, spanner on the nut and the, the space is quite tight so you start loosening the nut and when it gets to a certain height you're meant to take the spanner out and then do the rest by hand sort of thing but I've gone too far so I can't get, can't get my spanner out now oh, to no. get the ball joint splitter on oh, there. No. So we're having to go in with the, uh, with the hammer. <laughs> So Dean, that looked like it was a bit of a pain getting uh, all of those components <laughs> off, which are now, is this, is this yeah. everything? So, so these, these are your rear arms that we've uh, cut off, butchered off, <laughs> whatever you'd like to, whatever you like to call it. Um, we just got back from a break, a well-earned break. Yeah, but, um, absolutely. That definitely took a lot longer than, than, um, than anticipated. As you can see in here, the bolts have seized oh, inside. Yeah. So what we've had to do is actually cut them out and um, unfortunately with all the subframe etc in in place it doesn't really give you the the room to cut them out so it's all Hence good. the so use of special tools special tools <laughs> <laughs> no stealing our ideas guys <laughs> um so yeah so as you can see that's the rear, rear track arm same thing again yeah Let's just yeah, assume they're, they're all going to be like that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so we've done the rear. And um, for what it's worth, you can see the condition of your old bushes there. Coming, you know, it's one to come out. 
Yeah. This Paul Jordan Gator only got split from us, you know, removing it. So yeah, that probably was intact beforehand. So it's very much in need of the nice shiny ones that are over there. Absolutely, including the bolts, <laughs> the yeah, hard way. Yeah. So glad that we assigned that to the job. So yes, so we're going to start putting it back together. Cool. And um, and then so one of us will start doing the front. Nice. Someone else will start putting the back together and get the job moving. Hopefully the front's a little bit easier in terms of getting components nice. off, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> what we're doing now is Alberto over here is going to start um, stripping the front out getting ready for the new suspension components. We're going to, to remove the front under tray and then that's going to give us access to the steering track arms give us a, and as well as the front coffin arms. Nice. If you come and have a look here, you can actually see how bad your bushes really are. Do you want us to shine a light up there? Yeah, that might be better actually. Okay. Nice and clear. But what you can see is how the rubber is coming away from the actual, from the arm. And that means that the, the bush is actually dislodging. Okay. And it's, it's purely being stopped by the subframe. And what effect would that have on the sort of driving of the car when that starts to sort of perish? And... Um, it would have quite a, a, a big effect on the handling side of things. Um, but because a lot of people drive the cars they evolve with the system, so they, as, as things wear, people don't realise that they're worn. Also, um, if you're jumping from one car to a next, yeah. you might not realise how that is, but the real change you'll see is when you drive it mm. home this evening. Well, that's the thing, because I drive, I have other cars that I use on a daily basis, but yeah. now that I've driven this sort of 80, 90 miles this morning, yeah. driving it back, I should definitely notice Absolutely. the difference. I'm so. looking forward to your feedback, but I, I, yeah. think, I think I think you're going to really, really see the difference. I really hope so, yeah. It's going to tighten everything up. It'll be worth all of your guys' amazing effort. <laughs> I certainly hope so. <laughs> Is this a good time to talk about some of the other projects that you have going on? Yes, yeah, so today we've got a car in for an IMS bearing. Aha! And uh, the, the famous everyone, IMS bearing. Everyone loves it, everyone <laughs> loves it. And Chris explained it really nicely, actually, at ePorsche, sort oh, of that's how good. it's a bit of a forum myth it's that happens um i think globally it's reported i've never read anything but globally it's reported about five percent yeah um in my uh time on working on porsches i've probably seen about seven seven of them um two of which two have been 997 the very very earliest uh 997 gen ones 2005 models um, but today we're going to be doing a 2008 cayman Okay. Which means that you cannot just do it in situ. You can't just pull the gearbox off, take the clutch off, and then extract the bearing. Because the um, Porsche did a fantastic design where you can't <laughs> extract the bearing. But um, there's another company that's come with a, a, a clever solution, special tool. So where we're going to bore out the recess for the IMS housing. And therefore, we can extract the bearing and replace it. So, excuse me. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be replacing the bearing, but only after we've actually bought the, uh, the recess out. Okay. So this is going to be interesting. I know there's a few specialists out there doing it. I'm sure once we've done the first one, it'll be fine. But um, it's, going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting doing the first one. And you do have some nice things in here today, which I can't show too much of, but that's a what, 928? That's a 928. That's a long-term project car, that one. All the engine and bits are all on the floor there waiting to be... Uh, <laughs> reconstructed <laughs> so that's a that's a big project um, we've got the Cayman on the ramp uh, that's just about to have the IMS bearing yeah we've got a 996 3.4 where the engine's being rebuilt because the head got a the cylinder head got a crack wow um, we've got a Cayman over there that's got sunroof not working water ingress I've always uh, fancied one of those KMs you know there's something about them that uh, I, I, like. I, I tell you what we had, um, my first Cayenne was the turbo version of that model and lovely car, lots of car for the money, but a uh, juice guzzler. Yeah. It was horrendous. Putting in 100 quid's worth of fuel a week, less than 300 miles to the tank, it had to go eventually, unfortunately. Well, I have a 
currently a 4.4 Range Rover, which <laughs> averages around 15 miles per gallon. So yeah. I'd probably just about be able to deal with that. But nah. yeah, they, I think as they get older, yeah. they start to look a we little better. We were getting 12, 12 to the gallon around town. Bloody <laughs> hell. That's unacceptable. Yeah, I know. It? It's just not, it's not fantastic. So Right. So. Um, Alberto is going to be replacing the front shock absorber top mounts. Um, the, so the top mounts are subject to more abuse because of the, they're on the steering side, so sort of turning all the time. The rear top mounts never seem to go, um, uh, but we, we fit a lot of the front shock absorber top mounts. When we take it out, we'll actually show you how they've separated and they've parted. The rubber comes away from the aluminium inserts. So yeah, so as soon as that's out, we'll show you. With a bit of luck, it won't be corroded and need heating and melting, <laughs> but. Let's Fingers see how crossed. we go on this one. Fingers eh? crossed. <laughs> mm. That's a good sign already. Yeah. Yeah. I told you things are going to get better from here on yeah, out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think that's seized on there. Okay, otherwise we take off and when the bottom pan. Okay, and then um, and heat it up. Yeah. yeah. So it's looking like <laughs> <laughs> we spoke too soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's likely that this one is seized. So okay. uh, um, everything will have to happen from underneath now. Okay. <laughs> if you come right in, you can see the corrosion. Oh wow. Underneath. And that corrosion is going to follow all the way up. Wow. <laughs> and so what's happened is the top mount is now seized yeah. to the shaft. So what we're going to have to do now is heat that up. Yeah. A little bit of heat is going to melt the rubber. That'll just pop off and then we can deal with the, with the insert around it. <laughs> the fun just never stops with no. this car, does it? No. So once you seated that, that up for a little bit, then all we'll do is pull it down. It'll separate the top mount and part of the rubber bush. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to see my car on fire today. <laughs> it's very exciting. This is just the start. <laughs> okay. There we go. Only part of it as well. <laughs> so, as you can see here, this is what's been left on the inside. What you've got is this aluminium insert that uh, attaches to the rubber. It's inserted into the rubber, and uh, the rubber's come off, but the aluminium insert is corroded onto the shaft of the shock absorber. Should we cut it? So, we can either cut it or um, heat it up. Good. Feels like something's moving. Wow. This is the insert that we were talking of, and that's uh, 
It's getting there. <laughs> You're trying to get this off. That's correct, yeah, and that's what's seized on there. So it's moving now. Because of all the moisture that's just corroded inside, it's just... Yeah, yeah. but it's being very stubborn. It's, it's holding on for dear love. It doesn't want to leave, but we're going to get it off. Is it doing anything? Yeah. Oh. 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 Yes. <laughs> wow, you little <laughs> b <laughs> To be polite. Yeah, to be polite. Oh my gosh. Oh. I was gonna say, I do get comments on videos like this saying, well, you could do that at home, like an oil change or something. But oh yeah. This, I'm gonna argue. <laughs> Look at the state of me. There's two of us here as well. People yeah. do this on the floor. Imagine no, that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Unbelievable, guys. Wow. The came, came Good. Free as well. So. Happy days. Double whammy. One of two. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the other side's easier. Would be nice. We can hope. We can hope. <laughs> Do you think that any of this has been changed before? Nah, this is original equipment and... It's probably dated, isn't it? Um, this is definitely original equipment. This is... This would have come out of factory. Wow. You can see by the, the moulding marks. But these are genuine arms. Yeah. And, um, yeah, this will definitely be... This would have left the factory with your car. So that's how many years, years ago. Yeah. Now look at these fresh ones going in. So something worth mentioning to you, um, on the bearing, and this is actually, we see this quite often when a, a car comes that's been uh, repaired by a non-specialist. You see, that's the bearing there. And it's got no steel plate on it. So what you need to do is you need to remove the plate from the old bearing. Okay. And then, and, and put it onto the new one. And quite often, well, someone will come and say, I've got a noise from the front. And because it hasn't got the steel plate on it, it actually causes noise. And it's something we see quite regularly. Okay. Just get something to pop that out. So you, you just tap it over there just to move it a little bit, pop it out, and oh, voila. I see. So that, that thing normally gets missed if you... Yeah. If you don't know. And it's only a couple of quid, but yeah, people do miss it because they don't realise that it's meant to be swapped over. Voila. Mm -hmm. Perfect. They just corrode, corrode inside there in the aluminium insert. So that's, is that this? Yeah, that's the spit here. I see. That's where it corrodes. And then these rubber, rubber parts of the top mount, that's, they start to part and right. come away from the actual aluminium insert. So quite often when somebody goes to a garage and they get reported, it's because those are actually separated. Um, I don't think these are original. I think these have been replaced at some stage because of the colour of them. There's, um, there's a couple of manufacturers that do them in silver, whereas um, they're actually black. I see. From, from, um, from, from Porsche now as well. <laughs> oh, it's all coming together. I don't it's... think you'll be here that late, to be honest. Really? No, 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 because so the front won't take that long to do. Um, but the, the hard work is done now, so... It was just getting everything off, wasn't it, really? Yeah, yeah that, that, that was the, the difficult part. Um, so, yeah, get the front done, do the track arms. Um, well... Actually, we haven't got the, the front coffin arms out yet, but um, as Alberto pointed out earlier, the, the, the most difficult arms to get to are always the ones that are corroded and seized and you can't get them out and yeah. you have to cut them out. Yeah. The ones that are fully accessible, they always just drop out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I wonder what this will be. Yeah, um, I, think, I think the fronts will be fine. OK. We actually can move to the fronts. We're ready to move to the front, are we? Cool. OK. Um, so we're going to start assembling the top mounts. And put it up, uh, put that all back together, and then uh, we'll do the, the coffin arms Amazing. after that. Can't believe how good they look. Matches the paintwork now. Yeah. Would you say, is it a weird question, but 
how overdue being done would you say these were? Sort of? It uh, depends on the mileage and, and the conditions that they're subject to. Um, you probably find that that's a good, I would say at least a good five years overdue. Right. Um, even now, if you think 997 Gen 2s, we're um, doing quite a few of them doing suspension arms for the bushes, etc. Yeah. And, yeah, um, yeah. you know, so they, they finished in 2012. So, you know, cars that are, are eight, eight, nine, ten years old, well, ten years old at least, um, they, they're already having suspension refreshes. So this is probably an every sort of 10 year maximum job as opposed to 20 yeah. years, which is what this again depends is. how they're being kept, how they're being driven. Yeah. And um, what sort of mileage they're doing. And so. this being on 130,000 miles. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, wow. It's probably. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely got money's worth out of uh, the original <laughs> equipment. <it>. <laughs> what do you say we just, now that we've got all the saws out, why don't we just cut the back box off and just make it straight through? Well, you say that, <laughs> in a few months' time, we're going to have the equivalent of doing that for you. Oh, uh, yeah. So we'll have to get you back to do that. I'm really excited about this. Uh, this may or may not have been the thing I mentioned earlier on the video, but yes, hopefully some sort of yes. exhaust system for the car. Yeah, um, I forgot to mention that earlier, but absolutely. It's, um, and what it will do is it will uh, do away with the U-pipes connecting the exhaust silencers to the cat converters, these pipes over here. And what we're going to do is replace them with a pipe with a valve in yep. it that's controlled by a vacuum. You'll have a remote fob on your, on your keys. You'll be able to open the valve and close as you please. Um, however, when, when the valves are closed, it'll be just like stock exhaust. When they're open, it'll be a very, very uh, so, sports exhaust effect. So open will fully bypass yes. any silences. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm smiling just like you are behind the camera <laughs> you, as well. You certainly wouldn't be able to do a track day, you know, no, anywhere like Brands Hatch and that. You just won't get with past. the valve, you know. Yeah. Switch it off. Switch it on when you please. Oh, I can't wait for that. That's very, <laughs> very exciting. Okay, ready to come down? <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is pull the shaft down to get the bump stop over, but um, it's quite slippery. Yeah. And then, the, of course, it wants to return back up again. Yeah. So you're fighting with that, trying to get a bump stop on the top. But it's also slippery, so yeah, it's hard it's to keep slippery, the grip yeah. on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's take that out the way, and then we'll get it done. Yep. Nice. That's it. Lovely. Yeah, Back on track. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So, what we do is put the spring Actually, back. Let me put down down. No? Yeah. You wanna... So you just got to get the first bit over and call it the tail. That's okay. Like that. Let it spring up. There we go. And then what we still do is we just feed it down, just so it stops the tension. So when we put the top mount, we're not fighting against the tension of the spring as well. Can you see it? Yep. I see yes, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Done. It's not coming back high enough. Oh, there we go. Nice. Because it's got the position. There we go. So we just need to put some nuts on on the top. Awesome. Wonders. Looks much better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, definitely getting there. the design of that it's tapered and then it fits into the to the hub side what happens is that drops down a little bit so the, the nuts just spinning the whole lot so what we're going to need now to do is push this back up so that the taper is catching inside the hub side and then offers the resistance
Hmm, okay. There sure. we go. More corrosion on this. Yeah, corrosion, but you can see the nylon in there. The nylock part of the nut, so you've got corrosion combined with the nylock and that holds on for dear life. Yeah. You've got a clip for the gator. And my screwdriver will contact it. Oh, um, I see it, it's a tiny little. So from here, we can now pop the gator off. Okay. You can see in there, it's popped all the way. Oh yeah. Okay, so now we're just gonna get a spanner and it's gonna be 30, 32. Right, and what I'm gonna do is just crack it off. Uh -huh. There we go, and spin the whole lot off. So this is obviously a, a, a one-man job, really. But um, as you've, you've come down for the day to get it all done quickly, we've, mm -hmm. that's why we're doing two of us. Do you think this would normally be sort of two days' worth of work? Not quite. So um, without any uh, corrosion and issues, <laughs> book times, we should have been able to turn around in a day for you, okay. including the four-wheel alignment. Yeah. But yeah, you know, we're talking about just on the coffin arms alone, you're heading towards three hours between the front and the rear, then the tuning forks, the track arms, the top mounts. So, so yeah, I think a day's work would be fair mm. um, and the alignment, uh, but certainly with, with issues, this is where customers don't quite understand, you know, the, how much longer it can actually take. Than what's sort of yeah. expected. Yeah, yeah. so when, when we estimate, we say subject to stripping, which is just a little, Disclaimer, just to let customers know that if we encounter issues like that, unfortunately, the, the after, cost will go up a little bit. But after uh, people watching this video, they might understand what that means now. Uh, <laughs> and I tried themselves. You're, you're trying to change it as quickly as you can, but you physically can't get it off. <laughs> If you come have a look over here, you see the, uh, if you look from the side, that. Yeah. And then the side view here, you can see how it's dislodging. Yeah. It's not even at all, is it? It's no. It's, it's actually coming out. It's coming up and down. Yeah. And you can also see here underneath, you can see how the rubber's coming away from the aluminum insert. Yes. And that would be set in the rubber from factory, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, definitely doing the right thing by having these replaced. Fantastic. So these nuts have got nylock on them, um, and the, the trick to getting them off is once you've loosened them, the hotter they get, if you were to stop midway, they would lock up again. Okay. So you just got to keep going. As, as, <laughs> as much as your arm burns, you just want to keep going until that nut is stop. off. You can see how he's struggling there. Now, if he stopped, it would be much, much harder than that. I'm about to stop, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You're being filmed, Albert. Huh? Oh. Don't give up. So I take over midway. <laughs> we'll just swap. <laughs> I do honestly feel awful standing here holding a no, camera. No, 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 no. Watch you two exert yourselves. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. There it is. Nice. This one's seen some, I bet you this one's got stories to tell. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. You can just see how that bush is coming out. And that was, that should be all the way in and set. Yeah, so that is. Yeah, yeah that's just gonna be moving. Way past its sell by date, that one, isn't it? Yeah, and what you'll find is, rather than that pivoting on the bolt, that's gonna be pivoting on the bush. And I can actually feel I can actually feel that moving when I do that. You can feel that moving. So is that just gonna give you lots of play? Absolutely, yeah. 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 Absolutely. So we lubricate the bolts so that in 20 years time when the next person goes to do the job, <laughs> hopefully it'll be a lot easier for them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With a bit of luck, we'll be, those, uh, be the garage that yeah. gets to do it again.
Right, so what is going on here? This looks very, very fancy. <laughs> yes, so at La Rose, we have invested in a four post ramp. We're going to do a geometry on your car. We replaced all the bits, which warrants a, an alignment. And we're going to set up the front and the rear. We just okay. need to find it from you if you want a standard setup. Get the best wear out of your yeah. tires, or if you want slightly fast road, so it's suitable for the road. Mm. But then if you want to do the odd track day, just give you that little edge. Is it going to compromise the ride quality? No. If it, you so won't feel, the ride quality will feel exactly the same. So it's in terms of handling? And handling, a little bit more camber, basically. So what you do is yeah. you get spec from Porsche, and it's the upper end of the spec would be fast road, but still in the green, keeping it in spec. It just means you'll get a little bit less wear out of your tires, you know, a little, okay. bit, a little less life. So it should be more fun to drive on a B road? Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we try that? Okay. Fast road <laughs> setup it is. Fast road setup. Okay. Yeah. So we always start at the rear and start with doing the camber, then onto the rear track. And then once the rear is set up, we move to the front. We then uh, do the camber adjustment. On these, you can't actually adjust the caster, whereas with the older cars, you did have caster adjustment. Um, then we'll do the tracking, and then we'll go back to the rear and check that that's still um, what it's meant to be. Back to the front, tighten everything up, and then that's it. Four wheel and alignment Amazing. done. Awesome. So this is where the, the readings are. I'll just put your eyes there. So this is, where, this is what Alberta's looking at to do the alignment. Right, so what we've got here is um, Alberta's busy adjusting the camber, which is the first adjustment before the track. Over here you can see your figures. Um, this is the other way around. So this is the left-hand side, this is the right-hand side. He's busy adjusting the right-hand side. As you can see, it's far out. What we're looking for is 120. But as, we've, um, as we can go up to um, negative 150, we're probably going to hover towards that as the fast road setup. So this negative 149 over here it's about right. is your perfect fast road. It's just, uh, just before it goes into the red. However, when we move the tracking, that will move. Okay. So as, as you move, as you adjust one, another one will adjust as well. And then see how the the, the uh, camera came down. So we're around just a minute out. Well, so, from experience, that will now go down. Yep. There we go. Oh. Painted them. Look at that. And, <laughs> um, and changed the conical washers. And then, um, next time you come to see us, if there's a next time, I will treat your car to a set of locking wheel, wheel bolts because they would have been delivered to us by then. That's amazing. <laughs> so I get a little prize for coming along. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Look at that. And then you put in new... And we put new wheel bolts, which, we, which were on the shelf. I feel like I should really get the whole car clean now, to be honest. <laughs> which it, it will be getting properly clean soon. But um, uh, thank you worry. so much. That's awesome. So we finally got to the end of a long day of putting all these suspension components on your car. Uh, we've done the four wheel alignment. Uh, so we're just going to take it for a road test. Yep. Um, everything should be all lovely. We can send you on your way. I can't believe how difficult it was for you guys <laughs> to do the... Just getting everything off was probably half of the work, to be honest. Yeah, so. I think this is um, probably the hardest I've ever worked, doing a suspension I'm research. I'm so sorry. Yeah. No, don't worry. <laughs> it's, so all, it's all part of it. Hopefully it'll make you know, some decent being. Yeah, yeah. Well, 100% awesome. this video is going to be fantastic and I'm sure everyone uh, watching has very much enjoyed it. So thank you so much for, You're uh, welcome. for letting me come and stick a camera in your face and, and yourself as well all day. It's been <laughs> a lot of fun for me and I'm sure the viewers have enjoyed it too. So I'm super excited obviously to get in the Porsche now and, yeah. and take it on the road and see how it feels with all this new setup and new Absolutely. components. So yeah, big thanks of course to LaRose Porsche and Dean for organising this and for doing this incredible work and uh, yeah, and make sure spider to check performance. these guys out. Spider performance, <laughs> the parts that have gone on the car, yeah, websites all in the description yeah, below, no, no, you guys absolutely. can check them no, out. No, thank you. And well, thank you for coming down, really appreciate it. And it's my pleasure, a great it's been, day with you. been a lot of fun genuinely and uh, hopefully it won't be too long before I'm back. And, uh, uh, hopefully next time we won't have to work so hard. <laughs> hopefully next time we won't have to work so hard. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, thank you so much. Next thing for me then is to get in the car. I'll let you guys take it on a road test and then uh, see how it is. Thanks Lovely. so much. Thank you.
Okay, here we are in the Porsche after it's had all of the suspension work. It's a different day. It got very dark, obviously, after I was at the Rose. So I've come back out now to filming. Can I just say, first off, how amazing the guys there are. Dean, in particular, was fantastic on camera. And well, it was just really, really fun for me, actually, to watch. And hopefully it was for you. The video's pretty long. I think it's always going to be an hour. And I did think about cutting lots of bits, but I just found it all so fascinating and hope you guys have found it fascinating too. So please do let me know in the comments below. Anyway, what we're here to look at is the Boxster. After all of the work, how is it feeling? And I'm pleased to say, initially, as soon as I got in the car, it feels like the whole thing has been put sort of, oh, there's second. It feels like the whole thing has been put on like a Afghan rug, a really spongy sort of lovely texture underneath the wheels. Even here on this bumpy road, yes, it's retained the, you know, the harsher side of the ride quality. It is very um, susceptible to every little bump in the road but it just feels really balanced now. There's not loads of individual knocks at the corners, it's all round, um, consistent. And I've raved and raved about the steering feel in this car in previous videos of one of its main attributes. And I can actually say it's got even better. Of course it has, but I was really quite surprised by that because it already felt so, so good to me. And I couldn't imagine it feeling any better, but it, it really now does. Um, the input is even even less severe to require the same sort of turning ability. It's quite remarkable how sensitive this rack now is. Um, you can probably pick up there, I'm barely moving the wheel, but the car is darting all over the place, which is such a, such a fun, such a really cool sensation that certainly my Z4 never had with that electronic steering and absolutely nothing else that I drive has. So. Let's just give it a little blast anyway. Whoa, <laughs> there goes the back. Could not be. Could not be a worse day for this car right now, but it feels fantastic. So in a very quick summary without going into a lot of a lot of details, it feels magnificent. Crunchy clutch, Porsche didn't actually have any parts on the shelf, so I've still got that issue ongoing, although Dean assured me that it's sort of not gonna fall off, so it's okay to drive, but it's just an unpleasant sensation. So that will need to be sorted, along with a few other bits. Obviously, we're gonna hopefully go back for the exhaust thing that we spoke about, and I'd like to get cruise control retrofitted. I still have the occasional O2 sensor issue that flags up my engine management light, so there's a list of things to do on this car and I have to say I've been enjoying it a lot more and the thought of selling it right now is not something I want to consider. So with the suspension refresh as well, it's actually a lot more exciting to drive because yes, it's still bumpy and firm, but it sort of just feels correct now as opposed to unnecessary, if that makes any sense. So I'm very, very happy indeed with the work that was done. Now, how much did it all cost? Well, the total cost for the suspension work was about 2,600 pounds. I believe around 17, 1800 of that was the parts from Spider Performance, which was literally everything, which is not as bad as I thought it would be actually. And the rest was labor, around 850 quid or so was labor. And full transparency, La Rose Porsche really, really helped me out with this one so big thanks to them um can't recommend them enough those guys are fantastic as you've seen for yourselves and i'm excited to to go back to them and or e porsche in the future for more of my boxer requirements of which now i think there's quite a few so all that's left to say then is a big thanks again to squarespace for sponsoring this video because again it's an expensive video as you've just heard and they really really do help to literally make it possible and I hope you've enjoyed it, this much, much longer form film. Probably the longest on the channel, actually. But I just thought it was so fascinating and so interesting. 
um, and Dean is fantastic on camera, I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, so if you're watching Dean and Alberto, thank you so much for all the work you've done with the car. It feels a dream to drive and very, very happy customer indeed. You guys will be able to hear more about sort of how this drives now, potentially on some track days coming up, but at least on a sunny day when we can really stretch the legs a bit more and I can tell you in more detail about how this now feels on the road. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you all very, very soon.